Hey there, internet friends, and welcome to another episode of That Nerdy Site Show, a weekly podcast where the team members from That Nerdy Site get together to talk about their lives and all of the nerdy things we love about them. Joining me this week, we have Logan Wilkinson. How you doing, Logan? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Trev? Doing all right. We are recording this. Uh, this was originally going to be like our regularly planned episode for this week, but you are just getting over some strep throat, so we had I to am, kind of shuffle yes. some things around. So we're actually recording this as our kind of our January Patreon early access episode. So uh, if you are hearing this in the uh, at the end of January or uh, you know early in the month of February, uh, thank you for being a Patreon supporter for us. Uh, if you're hearing it after the fact, we're probably going to release it a little bit early to tie into our our main topic of uh, uh-huh. this week's episode, PAX East, um, because we will be attending PAX East, and so we're going to be talking about some PAX East memories today, uh, so it'll be nice to have it kind of go out live for everybody else in the universe right around the time we will be out there uh, in the end of February. So so yeah, uh, early access for January. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Um, in particular, thank you to our Patreon producers, James L. and Jason Bellevue. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. If you enjoy what you hear, remember you can always like, subscribe, rate, review the podcast uh, everywhere you can. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. I don't know if we're on Stitcher, despite Logan freely saying that on mm-hmm. podcasts mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. what other things. That is correct. Um, that is correct. You know, we're, we're out there on things. If we're not, let us know, and, and we'll try and dig into it and, and find it. Uh, and if you are feeling generous and are not already a Patreon supporter of ours, you can always uh, support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash that nerdy site. Um, thank you again to our Patreon producers, Absolutely. James L. and Jason Bellevue. Uh, no new patrons to discuss this week. Um, so, yeah, let's just dive right in, Logan. You you kind of pitched this idea as uh, yeah. uh, for what we wanted to talk about um, because uh, PAX East is around the corner. Mm-hmm. We had just submitted, I think, I don't remember if you pitched this before we got accepted, but uh, we are officially accepted as media members yeah. for PAX East. Um, currently, you, myself, and Frank are. Um, we are still waiting to hear back. We submitted uh, Christian and Cameron uh, a little bit a few days later, and we're still waiting to hear back on if they will be approved or not. But mm-hmm. if if they are not, um, they will still be there with us in some form or other because I have some spare badges I can give them, and we'll all have a crazy hotel room that mm-hmm. I'm sure will will either break us or bond us. So Exactly. We're going to find out one way or the other, man. It's always a good experience, those uh, housing situations. Yeah. In, in particular, I already have, I'm looking at it right now, my big old uh, uh, container of earplugs because oh, yeah. Cameron... Cameron is a snorer, and so if we're all going to be in the same hotel room, uh, we are we're going to need those. So yeah. uh, I've got that covered for everybody. But yeah, um, so tell me about some of your favorite um, PAX East memories. Like when did you start going? And mm-hmm. uh, well, PAX memories in general, but um, we'll kind of probably central focus on PAX East, I imagine, because that's the one yeah. we will be attending. Um, yeah. So my favorite, uh, a lot of them, or. A lot of my favorite, or at least early ones, are PAX East 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, the one I believe you and I met at. It was one me and you met at, uh, which is my first one with IP. Um, and it was a great first PAX to go to. Um, was it your first one period as well as yes, with IP? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, PAX East 2017 was actually my first industry thing um cool. in general and like just like community thing in general right where i had again you you had attempted to make it to kind of funny live a couple times and kind of funny live and also make it to beyond 300 um right and okay. i had been unsuccessful in all three of those um and so get into the point then at um pax East 2017 uh was the one where ip had its kind of site dinner and uh, and getting to the point in 2017 where yeah going to the IP set dinner and sitting down with like you're there and like Ali Mushka and I think Andrew Taylor was there um, and obviously like Jared George all those kind of people and Alex and then obviously Greg Miller came to that dinner as well mm-hmm. um, which is my first time meeting him as well and that's it was this. Was that the like? That was Colin. That was the Colin. That one. was yeah. that was like days after Colin. Yeah, literally. Had, the I yeah. think that dinner itself was the very next day. Yeah, um, yeah, and because it, it was it was between the yep. tweet and when uh, when Colin left, uh, yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, when Colin yep. left yep. on yep. on Monday, because I remember the day for the tweet, it was that dinner. Yep. Yeah, I remember um, going through security on my way home from yep. PAX that Absol- year. Same, and, I was and, in the same security line. Yep, absolutely. And seeing uh, seeing the news that Colin had left. Um, and so being there, right, and like it'd be, it'd be such an amazing dinner, and like obviously for Greg too, because like Greg sat down next to me for like. 40 minutes at that dinner right and was just greg miller um and was funny and warm and welcoming and was like everything you could want him to be um and like i had talked to greg before that for like years kind of thing um but like that being the first face-to-face kind of meeting and then him being awesome and like us spending legitimately like 20 or 30 minutes just trading dumb missouri stories right Mm-hmm. Um, and me being like, yeah, like this is get this is just a dude I love. Like it's just a dude who is just an awesome, genuinely great person, right? And like having that be such an amazing moment, right? And uh, like one of the big recurring like joke, like when gags throughout that PAX was me and Alex looking at each other, just being like, it's all downhill from here. Like it can't get any better than this. And then like it would just constantly get better throughout that weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like the sensation of like walking and like that, it should be noted too, PAX East was cold as he- it was so cold that packs yeah it was um, the first time as as a as a boy from arizona it was the first <laughs> yeah, time was, i was in like the first time i actively remember being in snowfall snow is what you'd said yeah like it was occasionally you know it, it would snow up north kind of stuff and, and we would take like day trips after the snow had fallen but it was the first time like i remember really being in snowfall <laughs> coming down so uh and i i still have a or one of my one of the pictures i took was basically like a an artsy black and white photo of like my footprints in the snow and yeah. my aunt still thinks about that anytime i mention that i'm going to boston she's like isn't that where you got that picture of your of the snow and i'm like yep yep that's that's it was just so cold and so chilly and so like walking there and like crossing the bridge and getting hit in the face of the wind and then like basically walking in the doors early for the press hour and just like seeing the giant sprawled out packs um and just like my eyes light up like as a kid and like the world's biggest like toy store um and then immediately making a beeline to um, Emily's Way 2 and just, like, hanging out and playing the game and talking to Kyle for, like, 30, 40 minutes, right? And, like, becoming friends with Kyle there, right? Um, and we're just, like, walking around and exploring, right? Like, every day that PAX was just, like, wow, something new happened, right? And, like, obviously, kind of funny's panel, right? And, like, Alex getting brought on stage um, and kind of the insanity of that, right? Like, the, like meet and greets afterwards and just like hanging out with the cave crew basically like every single night um and just like getting so much time with like greg and we had like there and ip and you and all the different people in the community um it was such a like like it was a very much a trip of just like man like i don't know how you top this kind of thing um and it was such an awesome pack just like a wide eye experience pack just like this is why like i love these kind of things in these games like the games they were great and um i went like nuts and writing previews like i wrote so many previews that year um and it was just like so much fun and like that was one for me where it's like to this day like that is still like the measuring stick that i compare any event i go to to is paxis 2017 it was just like man like it like the magic eight balls aligned so much the only downbeat of that was having to leave because i left like midday sunday i've technically still never stayed all the way through a pax either east or west um and that'll finally change at 20 20s pax east here but it was just such a one of like this is really really quite like dope and awesome um yeah it was i mean that was definitely a good year um yeah because that was my that was my second pax east um and I think, I think that was my first one that I like was, uh, I was there as press. Yeah. And that was because my, my friends at, some of my friends at IGN had basically hooked me up as a, as a quote unquote freelancer. I don't even remember if I was freelancing at that point. I think, I think my time of freelancing had already come and gone really. Um, but, uh, they, they hooked me up with, uh, with a media badge. Um, and so, so yeah, getting to kind of go in and make appointments, um, uh, was a ton of fun, uh, but there was also like, uh, like you were with the IP crew, um, uh, whereas uh, as as I was more independent and whatnot, I just kind of had like the friends that I was there crashing with. And if you recall, I'm not gonna like, we're not gonna head too far down this rabbit hole, but sure, there was yeah. a lot of drama that year. Yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, there was. Yeah, uh, it, outside of the like all the the Colin and kind of funny stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that like, 
like I, and I, it, as you were talking about this, I was like, did I, what do I remember from that? Year? Oh, yep. that was that yep. year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, so there, there are a bit more, um, uh, memories from me tied to that kind of mm-hmm. side of, of things, but you didn't um, even stay with some of those people. Yeah. It's a whole, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah my, cause my, um, uh, my first year, uh, was the year before and that was my first PAX East. Um, uh, and so talking about that a little bit, like the first PAX I ever went to was PAX South in 2016. And, uh, and I've told this story a few times before, but like it was, um, I, I hopped into Sean Pitt's Twitch chat at one point, like right after my girlfriend at the time had basically like called things off. We were break, we broke up and I was like, well, I've got, I've got more uh, disposable income now that I'm not going to be using on dates and stuff. So, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and book this super last minute trip to PAX South. Does anybody want to go? Uh, and, and by the end of like that Twitch stream, just hopping into, to Sean's chat and stuff, um, like Zyger and Sean and Frank, who I had never met to that point. Uh, and I kind of all like agreed and we were going to, we were going to go. And so Frank, yeah, I, like Frank hit me up. He's like, so yeah, I'm in, I'm Phoenix. I've never booked a plane ticket. So can, like, what do I need to do? What can you, can you do that? I, I booked his flight. I basically was like, give me, uh, g- give me like your full name as it reads on your driver's license. Cause that's what they're going to compare it against. And, and I booked his flight, um, uh, for the very first time. Uh, and, and now all these years later, he's, he has of course moved out to, uh, to Austin and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, that was like, that all happened before I ever met Frank face to face was we made that decision to go to PAX South, had a great time there, hung out with like Andy Cortez and Alex Aziz and a handful of other community members, um, in there. And, and I want to say there were eight of us in that hotel room in, in, um, in San Antonio. That was the, uh, the year that gave us uh Zyger looking at a painting and thinking it was a window. Um, that, that wonderful little, tweet and meme uh, that i believe is still frank's pin tweet um so if he hasn't if he hasn't replaced it with like a that nerdy site plug or something like that because it was for for years you could go in that tweet and see like how see how people's um twitter handles have changed over the years because i think i'm still snarky starky in that tweet and uh and a couple other people had, had changed around but but yeah so like that was the first um pax memory and then we kind of leveled it up at pax east that year where there were 11 of us because that was like the unofficial ip hub um uh because like i want to say it was alex and tony and maybe one other person from ip with us that year um uh the knights of or nerds of the round table uh Mm -hmm. i.e sean group um uh was there with us Uh, and then, yeah, just like a handful of other miscellaneous people like myself and, and Zyger and, and uh, I think Kaylee was with us. Um, and so, yeah, there were 11 of us in that hotel room. And um, my best memory from that was um, going to the IGN party uh, with Alex and mm-hmm. us hanging out and, and Kirsten Slater, who was their events person at the time basically hooked <laughs> hooked us up or hooked me up with um um with like a drink free drinks wristband and um both Alex and I talked to Goldfarb um uh, because they were looking for uh, a news editor that eventually be- went to uh to Dornbush um but they were like we we don't know if we're going to make you know one person you know bring in one person who kind of has the experience or if we're going to consider bringing on two people and kind of train them up in in the role of you know news editors and so like uh, I will never forget um, Alex and I drunkenly walking back to the hotel room from that party thinking like, are we both going to get hired at IGN at the same time in, in these positions? Um, Cause Goldfarb was like, send writing, like do writing for a few weeks and send us the samples and, and you will go from there. Um, obviously, like I said, didn't ever amount to anything. Uh, but that is what ended up getting me um, the, the actual freelancing gig at IGN that I, that I got was uh, uh, he, he felt bad when he saw me at PAX West uh, later that year for never getting back to him or never getting back to me after sending my, uh, my samples and saying, I'm just going to get you put in the system. We'll, we'll, we'll get you set up as a freelancer. Um, so that was really cool. Um, and so, yeah, all, like so many of my like big industry milestone moments are, uh, as a result kind of tied to PAX. Um, uh, but yeah, like 2017 was, was great getting to kind of hang out with everybody and really like, like you kind of touched on like the, being there, um, and, and being in that very intimate setting with Greg while he's dealing with all the fallout of that. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think like, I remember looking at that and thinking like, 
it's really cool that he's here, you know, yeah. supporting IP and supporting his friend Alex and, and, and really all of us kind of um, uh, by extension. But, like, seeing how much we were supporting him um, and not trying to, like, you know, pat us on the back or whatever, but just, like, how much he needed that with mm-hmm. everything else that was going on in his life. Um, uh, like, just, like, I, I remember him and, and Alex just talking and gushing about Breath of the Wild um, and and their love of it. And how they loved, you know, both of them had loved like the flight out because they had Breath of the Wild to kind of, you know, play on the on the flights and stuff. So like I that that was absolutely kind of a like a milestone um, one. And then I was like I was trying to think I was like did I even go to PAX East 2018? And I was like yes I did. I don't remember much about PAX East 2018 because yeah. that was That's that was I think when too, yeah. yeah like I was so that because I ended up crashing with you guys in your Airbnb. Mm-hmm. I, got very little sleep um staying with the ip crew because uh because we don't know it was well not that we don't know how to sleep but like the accommodations weren't built for how many of us were in there and like alex was talking on the other end of the room and i couldn't get to sleep as a result of that because i just kept hearing him and didn't have earplugs or any of that stuff and so yeah like one night in particular where they were like 15 of us in that apartment there was so yeah. like that first yeah night, it was like so it, it was us. that first night it like when you all left because i didn't have a media badge that year like I, I basically like all of my my ign contacts had like had departed for other <laughs> other companies and i was like well I don't, I don't think they're going to let me in doing it on my own kind of thing so i, I didn't even bother submitting for media um in those couple years um and then, uh, uh, so when you all went to like the media hour, that was when I took the advan- to took the opportunity to finally get some sleep. Um, uh, and, and, and yeah, so like 2018 is a bit of a blur. Cause I was doing, like, I want to say I was just doing, that was when I was doing my like year of vlogging, um, daily vlogs and stuff. So I like knocked those out, but most of it was just like a less than stellar, like, um, uh, sl- sleeping experience just because of the the arrangement we were all in um so it was, i mean it was cheaper but yeah, yeah. I, like it, i paid for it and that was that kicked off my like hey i'm gonna just kind of like go to events and get a hotel room all for myself again because <laughs> yeah like i kind of needed that for for a few of them but um yeah uh and then uh I'm trying to think yep uh because yeah like pe- like we met at pax east 2017 but mm-hmm. i feel like we didn't really interact you and I all that much like my my first real like concrete memories with you come much more around kind of, kind of funny life, life three yeah. when uh when we hung out and like chatted for a few hours at the mm-hmm. bar after the event kind of thing yep. um, while, while everybody else is getting like wing wings and stuff down the street mm-hmm. um uh so yeah like I, I like I remember meeting you at that at PAX East 2017 but it was very much like oh he's like he's he's one of the IP guys I don't really know mm-hmm. um uh, and so we just didn't really like interact all that much at that point in time, but yeah, um, uh, de- that definitely has changed in the years since. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, fairly obviously. Um, but yeah, like 2018 is a weird one for me too. Like it was just weird energy that year, I guess. Um, yeah, that was an interesting. Like I, I think the place itself was nice. There were just too many of us in it. And, like, the layout of it was such to where, like, like you said, you could hear Alex and Tyler Therese talking in the entire rest of the, like, apartment, basically, no matter where you were. Yeah. Um, and then, like, giggling. Um, and so, like, you, you could ever not hear that noise. Yeah. Um, but, like, that first in particular was just, like, there's a lot of us here. Yeah. I mean, the first um, night in particular, like, the, the it was a combination of that. It was there weren't blankets or, pi- or like, enough yeah. pillows to go around. Yeah um while other people were there because yeah after that first night a couple people like peeled off and and had other accommodations and stuff but uh but yeah it was just it was a it was a rough first evening um like i do remember there were some there were some choice moments in the uh in the podcast uh when we all kind of like hopped on oh, because right. i want to say that would have been the that would have been just the irrational passions podcast yeah. that week um where we all hopped in and talked about like the favorite things we'd seen up to that point mm-hmm um so yeah, yeah that was a lot very of, good that was a lot of fun uh i want to say mike just he, like mike fucking shat, shat oh, all over dude. quinn or something like oh that oh my god it, it just had a couple really solid burns that is i will say this that because that was mike's first ever like event that he went to yeah it was, that was the first time i remember meeting mike and mike fucking killed that pax like he was on like comedy fire that whole week and like because the thing about mike too is that like he's very kind of quiet but when he does like come up to like make a joke he fucking like 
drops that joke in and walks away. Like, he just kills it. And, like, he was, yeah, like, he just, like, Quinn would just say things on that podcast. And Mike would just come in and, like, just, like, drop a bomb at him and walk away. And there was, I remember, like, yeah, Mike came in from, like, literally another room and came in and, like, said something to Quinn. And then also, like, you off the cuff as, like, I think Quinn was either hopping on or hopping off, like, just dropped something in two, and then just kind of went back to, like, reading your phone's Twitter or whatever, um, <laughs> that also, like, lit the room up that was very good as well. Like, that was a yeah. great, like, I will give it that, that was a very great, um, like, IPP, like, Paxi's podcast. Like, maybe my favorite one we ever did was that one, like, that, because that one's one where we just had, like, ten of us in a room together, all just eating pizza while like three of us were huddled around a mic in the corner, right? And like the setup was really funny. I love the pictures from that one. I have a ton on my phone, and there were a ton that like Alex and other people shared. Yeah. Um, there was also uh, like I'm just remembering we also watched the, um, the NXT this takeover. Is I was, this is what I was building towards as well. Like that wrestling yeah. was absolutely stupid, and I love it so much. Like it was like because we watched like. It wasn't it was, even it WWE. Was, it, was, it was yeah, like the undercard. No, it was, it was a WWE. It was. it was it was the WWE's NXT, their developmental yes, brand you. kind yeah. of thing that is now like up up on par with their their others. But it was it was like their big event so, a day or two before WrestleMania. All um, I remember is year. like Velveteen Dreams or whatever. Like, like yep. I loved him. Like he was so like I was all over that guy's brand. And like that was one for me where it was like this is the first time I should have watched wrestling in years and having like. Logan Moore was there as well, right? And, like, Jarrett and George, like, came over to watch it, right? And we had, like, all... And, like, I think Mike might have even been there as well. Like, Mike Reeves yeah. from Dual like, Shockers. Yeah, and, yeah, Michael. Uh, like, I want to say Moises was with us, and it got and him it was to, like, just like tune so, in and stuff. Yeah, like, it was so good. And, like, all of us just watching together. And, like, there were a few of us who, had never, who hadn't seen it in, like, years. Like, I think maybe me and Moises and another person. And it was so much fun. Like, that will give it that. Like, that energy was great. That I think that was maybe, like, the last night that we were like all there or something like that and like it was so much fun yeah because um, that would have been like the saturday night uh, yeah because i remember yeah like i flew back the next day to get yeah. home in time for wrestlemania i think i did too right and like the and this is all the well really you didn't care about stuff. wrestlemania but yes yeah <laughs> and this is all like great stuff about 2018 the, not great stuff which is fact like it was just such a like weird year for me where like there weren't as many great games that like grabbed me as in 2017 and also like PAX East 2018 was around the time where, like, I would say the most, like, I would say creatively frustrated and, like, depressed ever. Like, that was definitely, like, the single biggest down point was, like, in the midst of that time period. Um, and so it was just so weird. Like, it was weird to, like, fly in and be like, it's going to, like, spark me back up again. And then, like, it did in moments of, like, not for the, like, long-term thing. Um, like I would just be like kind of creatively and like personally just kind of like frustrated and kind of like downbeat through like May probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like it was this weird one where it's like the weird thing that didn't really do much for me. Um, and so it's always that kind of like the black mark when I look back and even though there are a lot of great moments like we just talked about. And so it's always this weird PAX East to kind of think back on. Um, and it led to me like change in how I operate a lot in like PAX is going forward. Like I would go to PAX West that year for the first time ever in 2018 mm-hmm. and like operate very differently in it and enjoy myself much more. Um, and then when we get to like PAX East 2019, do that one very differently and have like a ton of fun um, at PAX East 2019. Yeah. That was like 2018. I'm, I'm just realizing putting it in the timeline of like all of my other projects. I'm like, yeah, that was, that was near the tail end of my like year of vlogging every day yeah. for the year. Um, uh, cause that would have been like early April probably. And I, I basically yeah. stopped doing that in mid May. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, like I was, I was already like, I had already, I was basically working to the end of May. I was like, I committed to doing, or I'm, I've committed at this point to doing this for a year, but it's driving me crazy. I'm, I was yeah. beyond burnt out at that point in time. Um, so I was, I was ready for the, the time away and that was, yeah. So PAX West 2018, I didn't go. Um, that was oh, the first. I, I forgot that about that. Pax Fuck, yes, that's right. Pax, uh, Pax West. Um, since I'd started going, that I that I skipped because that that one at least is on like my side of the country more or less. So yeah. So like that had always been. But the the 2017 um, Pax West, um, like I went to, and I like that was the first time I've had, um, like, and I, like I don't even want to necessarily quantify it as like a panic attack. But like I remember going into the convention hall the the on the I want to say the Monday of PAX West 2017, 
walking around i saw like a friend and kind of like said hi caught up with him because i hadn't seen him all weekend and like i was just overwhelmed by people and i went back and just crashed in my hotel room the whole rest of the the day and was like i and like people were reaching out and being like hey we're going out and grabbing dinner and i was like i just was non-responsive to people um because i just didn't want to be around anything um uh in that and and i don't like i don't know if that was tied to the burnout or if it was just like anxiety from being you know surrounded by so many people because like normally i'm fine with that so it was it was a very weird thing but then it did strike again at um pax east this last year in 2019 Mm -hmm. where um because like (laughs) that was like pax east 2019 for me was a very like freeing year in that like yeah i i I was i hadn't been creating content i was just there to hang out with friends um i wasn't worrying about like oh i'm gonna play a game and then i'm gonna go like write up a a review or preview on on it or anything like that it was like and and as a result like I played more at that PAX than I had at all the other ones prior um, because I, it was like I played a thing and then I like I sent out a tweet about the thing and that was like I was like cool I can move on to the next thing now and and it you know there like the fact that kind of funny wasn't there for example meant there were a few fewer panels that I was like yeah. waiting in line and, and hoping to attend but also at PAX East 2019 I had kind of a, a repeat of the PAX West thing where um uh like on the like the first day i was like i played like eight things today which is more than i've played in entire paxes before and i was like feeling really good about that and like talking to you and a few other people about that and how like how fun that felt and then like the next day i was like i could not pull myself out of bed uh, and mm-hmm. i just sat in my hotel room and played ape out all day because i was like i don't i like i just can't so bring fun, myself man. to go to yeah to the hall and so i'm just gonna sit here and and like enjoy this game on the switch um and finally around like with like an hour or so to go left on the like on the show floor i got up and headed down and played like one or two things but it was like a i just i couldn't i couldn't bring myself to like to leave and go and and i don't know if it was like there were people i didn't want to face or whatever it was but like it was a another like I don't have to go. I like there's nothing compelling me to go and create content or anything, so I'm just going to stay here because this is more comfortable and this is this feels yeah. better to me today. So um I like I don't anticipate that happening uh now that I'm going back with a like a crew of people and like a game plan of like these are like we're going to be taking previews and and seeing yeah. games and and all that kind of stuff and and you know going into the like I remember sitting outside the um, the the press room a couple times to just like hang out with uh, with some of you guys from IP mm-hmm. last year, just being like, yeah, I, I like I don't have the media badge, so I feel weird going in, and and I wouldn't, <laughs> um, uh, just kind of like hung out outside. Um, but yeah, like that that certainly like mentality helps kind of like push me out of my comfort zone, even if I um, don't want to get out. Like I I will to get the the content up and going because like um you know i were talking a little bit about um kind of burnout um uh, before we started recording and like i i had plenty of time over the last couple of years to like get over the burnout that i had felt and so i'm i'm right now in a great place of like i'm really enjoying being back in the swing of things yeah. and creating the content and and i'm like pax east i'm looking very forward to God, yeah, um yeah. to going and and playing stuff and, and writing up previews and, and just kind of the, the whole atmosphere of working with a team again. Uh, well, it, I mean, working with a team period because doing Trevor Trove, I was always off on my own and I kind of like glommed on to the IP team every now and then. Like I would be writing alongside like you and Jarrett and stuff um, in the, in the media room um, like 2017, 2018. Um, but yeah, it was very much like a kind of um, I was, I was doing my own thing um and and could come and go as i please but this year out it's going to be like we got we have to like have a, a game plan have kind of yeah, like we'll have our own um, table locked down basically you know, strategy and, and all that stuff so yeah 2019 was a good pax east i like 2019's pax east a lot actually and part of it is because ip had grown by that point enough to where like me, Jared, and George could actually all collectively enjoy Boston for the first ever time, right? Like, there were enough people at PAX East that year, um, and we were, like, senior staff guys enough where, like, we could just be like, we're just going to literally dick off for an entire afternoon and go to Harvard to see Yadimushka. And, like, we did it, and, like, it was fun, right? Like, 
we the three of us like had lunch together every day and we just like went around spots in boston and like ate and we actually had to like see the town for the first time and like enjoy boston and like go to the waterfront and like walk around and it was like the first time i felt where like i actually got to enjoy the city it was also easily the best weather that boston's ever had um <laughs> for pax like it was such it was like genuinely like really nice weather last year um it still had a little bit of snow i remember that but like, but, I, but but last year like i took advantage snow. of it was like the shuttle like, yeah. yeah i took advantage of the shuttle that went from my hotel to the convention center last year for the first time instead of so so there were a couple of times where i didn't have to walk across the bridge during with yeah. the cold breeze and stuff hitting uh and i very much look forward to doing that again this year <laughs> Uh, and like, it was just such a great, like, energy to it. Like it wasn't 2018, like, which was such a, like, again, like, I think looking back now I can like see more of the good, but in the moment, which felt like just such a, like fucking disaster. Like I was so stuck in being just like fresh and angry and like, kind of like bummed out in the, like that, like two month stretch where I was just, like, I couldn't recognize the good. And like, it was the good again, right? Like it was me and Joe having a ton of fun together with me and George having a ton of, fun, ton of fun together. It was like introducing, um, like scott to didn't you guys party with uh nolan north and troy baker we also this is, we also did <laughs> definitely party with nolan north and troy baker and it was as wild and weird as that sounds um like because we just like legitimately like bumped into them basically and then just like hung out with them for like 20 minutes um and troy baker is a regular human being who is super cool and very beautiful nolan north is a fucking tornado of a man, and he's absolutely mad. Um, and I love him so much. And like, it was such a like fun, goofy, weird time. They're great, and like, No North took like fifty selfies on like all of our phones. Um, like, it was a ton. Of, like, that's the thing. Like, each night you're meeting in whatever hotel that was, um, with like a giant crew out of people there, uh, which is like fun and feel like very kind of communal for like our level of like content creators. Um, and it was just rad and like going out and like doing previews and that kind of forgetting interviews and creating content, which is like some of the proudest content I have from PAX's was that year. Um, and like seeing what Mike edited and put together, um, and like what George is doing on social and having like all of team IP there, like everybody was there, um, was sort of like really proud moment, I think. And then also, and the culmination of Pax East is, is also the culmination and slow growth of, like, well, not even slow, I guess, but, like, the growth of me and your relationship, too. Like, Pax East is just a really fun Pax for me and Trev, too, where, like, by that point in time, like, we were also running a, or had, I guess had ended by that point in time, a West Wing podcast. Yeah. Um, the, the, and, yeah, the West Wing podcast ended not too long after Pax West yeah. 2018. <laughs> but, like, that, like, show had to happen, obviously, right? And, like, by like by pax east 2019 trevor and me are just like absolutely like super like rat or die best friends kind of thing and so just us just like being dumb and like going doing stuff together as well um and like it's the thing like trevor is like just like sitting outside the hallway is very much like in green of my brand with like him seeing him there and like veering off and like spending like 30 minutes talking to trevor too because it was that thing of like when you said freeing it was also for me like i designed my because like as you go to paxes i think and as you go to shows you get I think smart and how you like you schedule yourself and mm -hmm. so like I just didn't over schedule myself for that year too like I gave myself time to just like, enjoy PAX and enjoy Boston right and so like seeing Trevor and being like oh I have time to just like talk to Trevor now for like half an hour in a hallway if I want to and so like doing that and like bumming around with you and like going out to eat with you doing those kind of things right and like I think just having such a like way more laid back and chill vibed um PAX and like part of it too was that like by that point in time um, I think I was like creatively back in again, and I was also at the point of being like, this is going to be one of the last packs I probably go to with IP because, like, by that time, like, those thoughts had kind of come to my mind, so just like enjoying all of it for what it was. Um, and it was just such, and like, it was a thing too, like, going and it was like, oh man, it kind of sucks that kind of funny's not there, and then looking back on now, like, it did just kind of feel like a giant, like, kind of funny community meetup. Yeah. Um, and that kind of had its own core cool energy to it. Um, and like getting to meet like John and like the, like all of his crew, um, there and like coming like really good friends, like two or three of those guys and like hanging out with like Mike and Logan more from do shockers so much. Cause I love both those people. Um, and just like 
really enjoying to think more and like different strokes of like that kind of community right and like still seeing Jin and like getting to like talk to and hang out with like Jin and um like the whole Papa Jinta crew there like Nick uh like it was just a really rad PAX and it was one for me where like 2017 was like the magic of it all and just like being in, being in a press room right and like looking around and being like that's Alana Pierce and that's Damon Hatfield and like oh my god like I'm legitimately working alongside like industry big wigs right and then by 2019 being like oh no like I've this is my my like whatever event I've gone to now right and like I like it's just like yeah, I was expected right and like ha- like being the you're thing so where jaded like, not even jaded but like not jaded but like, being like passing it on now to like Scott or like Quinn or like Jess like, yeah. these people who are like having the before like getting to see it through their eyes and be like this is really cool to be like comfortable with it and not like getting to be excited about it because they're excited about it right and like also like that was easily the best um like B&B we've ever had at IP as a collective was that PAX East 2019 um, yeah. B&B and to, like, it was right to, next to Dunkin' I got to Dunkin see Donuts. that one briefly yeah right and it was really cool like you get to be there too like that's right. There was, was like a Domino right, right Domino's right down the street. There was a Domino's right down the street. Pretty Domino's sure Domino's right down the street, and a grocery store right across the street. Like it was like this is a legitimately like I don't know how we planned this location out so well, kind of thing. Yeah, um, you guys did. Uh, you guys did end up having a uh, an issue though, where like you ha- didn't have it as many days as you thought you did, right? Oh my god, yeah, dude, that was yeah. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, like we had it one less day than we thought we did to use, right? And so because like half the site left early and half the site didn't. Um, and so, yeah, like, me and Scott had to, like, rush back and, like, grab our bags, like, midway through the day um, and, like, basically, like, clean up everything, pack up everything and, like, leave and then just, like, have our gear, like, all day Sunday. Um, and then I crashed with Andrew Taylor that night and mm-hmm. Scott crashed at the airport. Um, and so that was, that was a bit of insanity I forgot about. Uh, yeah. That was really that was really wild, yeah. Because um, I remember um, I, uh, I met Brandon Gann at the airport because that was the the one non kind of funny event that he uh he has attended um uh and uh, and we basically like uh i think we're basically communicating with you or like brandon is uh love the guy not technologically uh sound <laughs> so like i i basically ordered and organized like the uber to get him there and and all that stuff um to to get him to you guys and then handed him off and then i went and like we we hung up and chat chatted for a little bit um i think that was where i got to meet scott for the first time it was yeah um and then uh and then yeah like i headed off to my hotel which again like having learned from like events past was like i'm i am doing my own thing this year i am staying in a a hotel by myself yeah i'm paying way more for it but also that like peace and quiet was exactly what i needed um uh that year so so yeah it was uh, like i i pulled up the um i because i still have like my notepad that i took from pax east 2019 i played 16 different games at at pax east 2019 and i think um by the time PAX West rolled around, like I had made that like my goal to like, will I will I top it? And I think by I think at PAX West uh, last year I ended up doing like eighteen or something like that. I I That's did beat so it. Cool. Yeah. That's so cool. PAX West twenty nineteen was like the most I've played. But like so much of those, like I'm looking at it, like uh, I had Falcon Age, um, uh, Trover Saves the Universe, and like Control. I think were all and Vacation Simulator were all um, I managed to get into the playstation app and like get the time demos that they have which are oftentimes a pain in the butt because so few slots for the number of people that are there so like i was just feeling like a super pro about like organizing all that and and basically that was the extent of i'm making appointments this year it was just like hey if i get into these things cool if not i think i think i actually even got into one more than is on there i think i got into mortal kombat 11 was like you know what I'm going to give up this slot. I'm not going to want to play Mortal Kombat 11. I don't care about that game. I ended up playing the story mode at the end of the year and really enjoyed it. Um, but like for, for PAX, I was like, I, I, I'll, I'll give that spot up to somebody else. Cause they, I think like, Oh, it, crash team racing was the other one. That's the other one that's on there that I, that I played. Um, Cause crash team racing control and Mortal Kombat were like the only like big games that they had that they were showing off. Um, then you had to get like the, the appointments for all of them. So I was like impressed that I managed to get one a day kind of thing. Um, if I'd wanted it. So yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Pax, Pax, uh, you, you talking about kind of the, it being the community vibe of it, um, yeah. sparked in my head. Like one of the things I, as, as somebody who I, I think, 
um, from the very first kind of funny live because I did the games cast right after it, I became a little bit like of a face of the community, um, in those, in those early years of kind of funny to the extent that like, it was cool. And one of the things I always highlighted when people would come up and we would talk and stuff at, at events, be it PAXs or kind of funny events or PSX at the time, um, was what the thing I loved was going to a kind of funny event. And yeah, like I, I made a ton of friends at that first kind of funny live, um, but then every event afterwards, I still like I would make a handful of new friends um, and I would like I would walk away from the event with like another 10, 15 people in my feed that I would like be able to recognize and put, you know, um, put a face to and all that stuff. And that had dipped a little bit, I think, in 2018. Um, so when when 2019 came and um, and kind of funny wasn't there, but it like there was so many other parts of the community in part because we all knew there wasn't going to be a kind of funny live centralized location that year. Um, it was okay. I like, I had ma- personally made the choice. I'm going to go to PAX East to see my friends on that side of the country because I know most of them aren't going to make it out to the other side of the country for a PAX West or something like that. Um, so I went to PAX East and RTX and PAX West last year to kind of hit the three major sections and it was a it was another it was like a a reinforced year of um getting to really like see a ton of people in the community some of which like i recognized from like online and stuff but like a lot of people were new um Mm -hmm. and then getting to see them last year yeah yeah getting to see them at other events or or whatnot because like yeah getting to see like uh last year was like the most i'd spent time with like kelsey and mike Toundro, for example um from kind of funny new york um and so yeah and and um i think that was where i met maria and kayla who are very big in the what's good games community um and then i got to hang out with them a a lot at um, pax west as well and stuff so so yeah it was like it was a very cool community event um where we all kind of banded together because we knew there wasn't going to be big like a big centralized kind of funny event for us to all hang out in san francisco for a week last year um getting to see a ton of people there at uh pax east 2019 and then again at pax west 2019 was uh was a great ton of fun I had a great time at both of those so yeah, yeah lots, is- lots of good memories it left such a good taste in my mouth and has me very excited for, again, like, PAX East 2020 is one for me where it's like, this is going to be, like, I got, I'm got i ready for, like, home run vibes. Like, it's going to be, because, again, I think it's, like, taking the culmination of what we've talked about, obviously, in the all the PAX East before this, and then what we've learned, what to do, not to do, like, just enjoying yourself and now having, like, a new squad, too, to kind of, like, largely guide through it for the first time. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, because it's, it's going to be... It's going to be Frank's first event. Cameron last year was his first PAX, and that was that was funny because I loved that Christian Cameron went. Never gone, yeah, in like this capacity for like this long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but like Cameron last year, uh, I remember being super excited for him getting to go as as a, as like a, a contributor to Handsome Phantom and and it being his first media badge. And I didn't see him the entire weekend. <laughs> like yeah. we we just missed Cameron paths worked hard all, all weekend last exactly. Year. And so yeah, we we caught up about it kind of when we got back and and kind of shared stories and stuff. Um, but it was like really. Like I was very excited for him, and so um, getting to go back this year, um, I, I don't like he and I have not talked to the extent of like what he'd be doing for Handsome Phantom versus for us and all that stuff, um, uh, and some of that's going to be up in the air until we hear back on um, uh, kind of if he gets a badge or not. But uh, but yeah, like it 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 is going to be fun, kind of having a, a team to manage and kind of work through this event with because like i definitely anticipate there will be like we will all sit down around a, a microphone and, yeah, and record a, a, an episode of this podcast from mm-hmm. from pax uh, east talking about you know the cool things we've seen and all that stuff um but yeah it was a it's, it is a it's a very fun show um, it's my favorite I, show like, i love uh, pax east it it is it is probably I mean well like if you count like kind of funny lives and stuff yeah. um uh, like kind of for me it's it goes PSX because PSX was the first one I ever attended. Pax East is my um, first one. It's definitely like, exactly like, yeah. soft spot. Yeah. So it's it, yeah it's it, it it holds that special place in your heart. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. But yeah, Pax is I mean Pax is a great event and uh out, outside of like a few like specific like down yeah. memories and moments and stuff it's like always a ton of fun getting to go and hang out with people i'm very excited that um that i'll get to go and attend or, and be on my first panel this year with our friends at irrational passions mm-hmm. um i was very uh, uh fortunate to be invited to be a part of um 
the uh, RPG University panel about uh, the best and most annoying tropes in video games or in JRP in, in RPGs. Um, so JRPGs and all that stuff. Um, I was hopeful. Um, I don't remember if we've talked about this like publicly or anything, but uh, I had pitched, or I had proposed a, uh, a panel um, for that nerdy site to host uh, called bouncing back from burnout, really like looking at and talking about, um, you know, it, it, it largely centered around, you know, certainly my own um, experiences in it, but, uh, but certainly Logan would have been involved. And I think we had a couple other people that um, had similar stories to tell. And I'll still hopefully, um, at, like, I, I hope to pitch that um, for PAX West uh, and see what we can get there. Um, but I also am looking forward to pitching uh, in the future, possible um, that ultimate video game list show as a panel. Um, I think that can be very fun taking the idea of that show and and uh, and um, kind of like condensing it down to uh, a one you know hour panel uh, in as, it, especially because I think we can get some funner fun fun bigger names that wouldn't necessarily be able to commit to the ten weeks that that we kind of look for to do the actual show so so those are kind of like my future PAX hopes and goals and dreams and plans mm-hmm. and stuff but PAX East 2019 gonna be gonna be a lot of fun gonna be yeah. fun going back as as media mm-hmm. um, we've not started getting the uh, the onslaught of oh uh, they're coming uh, though of, <laughs> you know of they're like coming, hey yeah. come book it book your appointments um yeah it's, I, i'm looking forward to that um and uh and yeah it's uh uh got a got a panel to to go and attend um got a couple other friends on various panels that i'm looking forward to going out and supporting this year um mm-hmm. and the, yeah it is the, the you will i will i will look to you a little bit logan to like help keep me from like overburdening myself with the, oh no with, that's uh, yeah with appointments and stuff because yeah. um because yeah i don't want it i certainly don't want to immediately go to this and be like oh i hate packs now Collapse, um, yeah but, no i'm yeah. like i for me personally as like a final thing like i'm so excited for this packs like i Pax is such a show that i think does rejuvenate me so much um and as i like am finally get out of like the last kind of clutches of burnout i think um from like last summer really um and like really stepping into that nerdy stuff more and more and more and kind of embracing just creativity stuff in general that kind of being a big coming out party i think for the side as a whole and for me um i will hug belinda garcia so fucking hard at pax east like it'll be the first time actually just like hug her i, I don't um, think she's gonna be there i thought I, she I, said like, she was gonna be there was what i think we had talked about this together but if not i put you on blast Belinda. I mean, yeah, I don't think I, I, I don't think Ubisoft has. I don't think Ubisoft's planning on having a presence out there. We'll see. I said it now, so it has to come true. But like, I think they're more of a West the, thing. But yeah, at Good the luck. very <laughs> least, at the very least, uh, like like Pop and all those kind of people, right? And to, like to see the KF crew uh, if they go out there and like what's good games, like all of them, like Andre Rene and everybody else. Uh, kind of funny. Has said they're not going to be out there, but yeah, what, uh, what's good will be there. Don't, I'm sorry. I'm this just is a bad. To, this is I'm, a bad bit. This is I'm bad. I'm preparing you. I don't want you going in bad. with false hope because you haven't been paying no. attention to the internet since your strep throat. I was very sick. Okay. Um. No. Like. But either way, like it's it's one that I'm walking into with like maybe the most excitement since like Christmas team. I'm just like ah, uh, because like, I think like obviously being a part of a new team, um, and like being a part of like this site's not just first pack season, but like first ever event ever yeah we're, like a thing. we're hungry we got something to prove we yeah and it's gonna be a ton of fun them that they didn't um, uh they didn't like waste their resources giving us these badges yeah right and like frank is like getting to like work alongside frank and cam and christian and everybody there it's just gonna be a great energy like i'm so excited for like those like late night like talking late in the um like hotel b&b like conversations and talks and gushing about stuff um it's just going to be, like, a lot of fun all around, good energy all around. It's a good group of guys and girls um, at That Nerdy, and um, I'm very excited. It's going to be a ton of fun, and I will definitely make sure that you don't overburden yourself. But uh, PAX East 2020 is going to be a blast. You've heard it here first, kids. Do you think – we haven't heard anything um, one way or the other at this point, but um, mm-hmm. PAX West, mm-hmm. instead of doing a uh, – instead of doing the one-hour um, – early media day on the first day they did at pax west this last year they did like half hour every day um do you think they're gonna do you think they're gonna do that again 
I don't know, but I oof. like they, I like they that opened. More, I think maybe because I want to say that the convention historically had been like ten to six or the expo hall hours, and last year they did nine thirty to six for everybody, and then media got an extra half hour every morning. Um, so nine. they were they were nine to nine thirty exclusive um, last year. So I don't know. I, I, I remember. Think about that. I remember I they didn't it, tell. Yeah. They didn't tell um, the exhibitors that until, like, I remember the exhibitors finding out and freaking out about it, like, a couple of weeks after I had seen the email from, like, from Reed Pop basically saying, like, hey, the hours are changing this year, because um, it was also in part in, in Seattle, uh, it was in part because they were increasing security measures and stuff so they were like hey you're gonna have to go Pax through metal West detectors is such a now weird show man i will yeah say you're that. gonna have to go through metal detectors now and so to help kind of you know uh accommodate that and, and we recognize that that's going to cause delays we're giving you extra half hour every day and so like yeah um uh i remember like people like pop agenda seeing that weeks after i had already seen it and it was already like news to me uh and then freaking out and being like wait what we have to be there early every day because media is going to be in there at nine o'clock every day now what the crap <laughs> so i don't know if they will have gotten exhibitor backlash and will continue on doing that with uh with pax east but if they do uh, i'm sure we will definitely like try and see some stuff i'm also curious like i'm very curious what's going to be there and what's not given like it's it's certainly it seems too early for um any kind of like next generation games and all that stuff Mm -hmm. so like i I am very curious as to what uh the big boys might be bringing if anything if they're coming at all um versus like obviously there will be a great like indie turnout as there always is but like uh, i wonder if uh like square enix will be there with final fantasy 7 you know that demo again or something like that so yeah it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good fun show it's gonna be a ton of fun i'm very excited I'm all right with that. that and indeed um so that's gonna do it for this month's early access episode this episode of that nerdy site show thank you logan for joining me absolutely um, uh you can follow logan at lefty logie on the twitter is anything you want to shout out logan yeah definitely uh i want to shout out not this current week's episode of that nerdy or that one be film class because it doesn't actually exist, but an episode I wasn't on, which is Mystery Men, because again, Mystery Men deserves more eyes because it's a great movie, and I'm so heartbroken that only like half of that nerdy side has seen it. It is such a good show. I mean, such a good movie. It is like a Wilkinson family classic. Um, I love Mystery Men. So listen to Jazz, who thankfully nominated it talk to ben and chloe about mystery Man and how great it is um i would also say stay tuned for me to make a few that d plus show appearances did i get the name right uh yes that d yes. plus show yep um st- featuring phantom the megaplex and my mom went on a date with the vampire slayer they're both very good that Love. yeah that's the other one that you'd, you I, I forgot you'd pitch that as your as your other one the um when uh that uh when phantom of the megaplex ended like that was the immediate one that uh that was recommended as like oh the was it next, next? It's suggested lo- episode I so i was like all right yeah I, and and looking at kind of the timeline of of things um vampire came out first and then phantom of the megaplex was the very next disney vampire Channel movie fun fact co-starring the dad from the nanny so just you know think about that there you go and and the one of the ants from sabrina the first sabrina series. yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely man yeah uh yeah. that movie is so much fun uh family plex is a movie that has it, it's yeah we'll talk about that how how it's aged or not um yeah. but do all that i'm also as i mentioned beforehand watching star wars rebels and i might have thoughts on that and i'm gonna start watching the mandalorian soon so Really get some right. thoughts cooking here. Um, so you yeah. check all that out. And then also my personal ranking of the that Ultimate Video Game List show, Video Game Rankings, I guess? I don't know. Um, will go live on Friday. I don't know when this is going live necessarily. Uh, it'll be. Uh, this will also go live on Friday. Oh, so on Friday as well. So perfect. When you listen to this, get done day. listening to this and go head over to that. Go see my personal list. It is going to be the last of the four, I believe. Um, I had a lot of fun writing this list. Um, it was very silly and goofy, and video games are good, actually, though. You know what I mean? That's yeah. my hypotenuse. And Trevor. we will also be announcing um, on Friday, this Friday, we will be announcing the uh, 
the new cast for season two Ooh. of that Ultimate Video Game List show. Tease, so tease, sitting tease. down, sitting down with those people on Saturday to uh, to record our first episode, and we got, I think, a, a good little group together for the next. I agree. Uh, couple months to to go over that one. So, so yeah, keep an keep an eye out on all that stuff. You can follow me at Trevor J Starkey on Twitter, and uh, and yeah, th- those would be my plugs. Or keep an eye on that Ultimate Video Game List show, which will be back soon for season two. And uh, and yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with uh, that D Plus show. Um, I reached out to. A handful of um, people that had submitted that they want to be a part of the show. Um, so right now, it's just a matter of trying to squeeze them into the schedule and start working on getting some of those uh, episodes put together and out. But yeah, I really like that show. I like the format we've got uh, for yeah. it right now. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So check out all that stuff. You can follow all of us over at That Nerdy Site, and you can check out thatnerdysite.com for all of our latest content. Um, uh, I will also shout out Ben had a has a great feature out on the site right now. Yes, I if you're listening to this um the uh the week it goes live um for early access stuff if not go dig back through the archives for ben's piece on uh why brandon routh should be introduced into the mm-hmm. dceu as uh, as superman um it's a it's a very nice write-up uh that he put together put a lot of time into um and uh and logan and jazz i think sat down and did some editing it's on very it. good yeah yeah so uh if you've liked what you heard again please rate review like subscribe all that fun stuff everywhere you can uh and if you are not already a patreon supporter of us um you can uh support us on patreon.com slash that nerdy site where you get early access to episodes like this one every month um and for those of you that are patreon supporters thank you so much for uh, for helping us out and uh we we super appreciate it uh, we're finally getting back in the swing of things in putting together our weekly vlogs for our um, our you know five dollar and above tier. So we got all that stuff worked out, and uh, and yeah, we got a good good few uh, months kind of coming up here for the show. So uh, keep out an eye out on all that fun stuff. Uh, as always, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you again, Logan, for joining me. Absolutely. Stay nerdy and be good to each other.